Hey, stoked, stoked to be getting back together again, sitting down with Chris Dunn. Uh, Chris, what's up? It's good to see you. How's it going, Lance? Oh, man, it's good. Thanks so much for joining us. So like we're in the middle of unpacking and doing a deep dive around all things addiction. I, I feel like this is such an important thing to get into. Um, I feel like addiction is like in so many corners of our culture and society. And obviously our goal with these conversations is to learn, uh, maybe get a peek behind the curtain as it were. And, and yeah, hopefully reaching people that maybe have a similar story, but also those that don't have a similar story as they're learning, maybe finding ways to engage and, and make a difference. So, so Chris, let's, let's just kind of have you share your story a bit. Like you're with us because you are somebody that has addiction in their history. Let it, like, let us know a bit about your journey. So my journey, um, I grew up in, in, in a good household, good middle-class household. Uh, my mom and my dad divorced when I was around eight years old. All right. And I not like looking back now, I see that had a big, big impact on me. Um, dad, he, he, he worked for Wonder Bread and, and, and he was a good dad, but uh, he was an alcoholic. And uh, that was part of the reason why my, my parents separated. Yeah. And so my mom was me and my brother lived with my mom and, and, and she was a loving mom and provided a great household for us, a good upbringing. But um, I at, like when my dad left this this part of me kind of like started to rebel in school. And and then I started experimenting with drinking and and smoking weed and doing things like that around like sixth grade. Okay. And it just slowly progressed, man. And, and I, 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 it was kind of like that, like, um, it's kind of like whether there's like separations and two roads and I kind of started going down the wrong path at that point. Yeah. And so I went through school and, and, and I, I really, uh, didn't do, do too well in school. And, um, and I, around age 19, I moved out and, um, I, I grew up here in Reading and, there's, it's a big weed culture here in Redding, California. Right. So I, I, um, I started to grow uh, weed for a living. I, I used to grow a lot of weed for, and I did that for six years. And I was, I was very um, successful in that and I did it well. Yeah. And, but along with like the money came a lot of problems, you know, and um, I, uh, there was a, the first girl I ever fell in love with. Um, I broke up with her and she left me, and then I totaled my truck that I had, and then at that same time, um, these guys that I used to sell the marijuana to, um, they, they came, and they did a home invasion on me, and wow. they zip-tied me up, and put a pillowcase over my head, put a gun to my head in my house, right up over by Lowe's here in Reading, and started, like, searching my house, and um I it's kind of like if if you had your shirt over your face you could see a little bit through it yeah. and I remember thinking to myself like this is like life or death I, I have to try and escape so mm -hmm. um, when the guy like barely went around the corner I ran out my back sliding glass door and went to my neighbor and and he cut the zip ties off and then we went over to my house and the guys had left um so I, I was kind of scared I was only 24 uh, years old at that time yeah. and went and stayed at my parents house for the weekend and when I came back to my house everything in my house was completely gutted and gone um so I to recap like within that month I lost the I broke up with the girl that I loved yeah. I struck and I lost everything and was home invaded so yeah. I I I didn't know at the time that like I, most of my worth was in what I had it was in the accomplishments I had and, and, and all the belongings I had had gained through selling and growing weed. So when that was ripped out from me, I literally was empty inside and, 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 and I wanted to die. But I didn't I, I didn't want to like commit suicide. Um, and, and it wasn't like things that really registered where I thought about it. But I basically just went on this path of like, all right, I'm just going to do whatever I can to numb myself. And okay. I moved in with my dad. He was currently living in a trailer park here in Reading. And um, I moved in with him and started doing meth and heroin. And, and that's where I completely lost every part of who I was. Mm -hmm. I completely was numb inside and, and was just doing things that I absolutely hated, even as I did them. Sure. Uh, 
And, and so I did, you know, I, I stole from my family. I stole from friends. I, I, I just burnt every bridge that there was really. And um, so I continued on that lifestyle for around four to five years and um, never really being in trouble. Um, high on drugs. I, I robbed a gas station on Wonderland Boulevard with a knife mm-hmm. and I got away and, and during the, the, so I got away and then um, they, they ended up arresting me for the crime. Um, but just, just fast forward a little bit. Like I never went to church before, but my parents went to church. My mom did. And so she introduced me to like Caleb music and, and, and took me to church sometimes when I was in the really dark, dark place in my addiction. Um, excuse me. And so I remember like I was at my dad's house doing drugs and, and I specifically remember uh, that the song by Carrie Job uh, forever and listening to that song, not knowing anything about Jesus, but absolutely just being wrecked by, by the Lord and just crying and crying and just like not understanding like what was, I, I thought I was like losing my mind almost, but it, now I see the Holy Spirit just like coming alive and just reaching out to me and my brokenness. Mm-hmm. And so like Holy Spirit literally started to, to, to speak to me in such a way and disciple me without any leadership, really. I was going to church, but I, like the strong desire came in me to, to get a Bible and start reading it. And I and then I started praying and, and, and I, I could hear the voice of the Lord really leading me through things. And so the I, I could discern like people. Everyone was telling me to go to this program called Teen Challenge. Okay. And I started applying for the program. This is before I um, got in trouble. And but I was on heroin and heroin's a hard drug to um, to, to kick. You get very sick from it. So. Um, I never got to the point of actually getting into the program. So when I went to jail for the crime that I did for robbing the gas station, I went to the, my attorney and I asked him, I, was, I said, Hey man, I'm, I'm, I want help and I want to change my life. And mm-hmm. I want to go to this program called Teen challenge. And because in my heart, I already knew that the Lord was calling me to that program. And so my, my attorney went and talked to the district attorney here in Shasta County. And she said that she would give me a deal that she's never given anyone before, like an absolute miracle deal where if I go and complete a year long program, a residential program, which was teen challenge, they will reduce my felony strike case to a misdemeanor assault with deadly weapon. And so um, I went to Teen Challenge and I, and I came in the doors of Teen Challenge just trusting that God was, God like opened the doors of my mm-hmm. jail cell mm-hmm. so I could go to that place. And so I just surrendered everything when I went uh, to Teen Challenge and, and Teen Challenge, most of the people, most people don't un- fully understand Teen Challenge unless you've been around it. It's basically a discipleship school for people who suffer from addiction. Okay. So all, they don't teach you the 12 steps. They teach you how to have a relationship with Jesus. And that's what overcomes your, your addiction. Um, So let me know if you have any questions along the way. Let's talk about, I want to unpack a few things. Like right there, you said when you showed up at Teen Challenge, like you surrendered everything. What, what does that look like? Like when you, you've been on this path, obviously you were being prepared for that moment of surrender, but is there anything practical about like I surrendered all, or is that just like a posture of the soul you say a prayer and it happens. I think, I think it's, it's a little bit of both. Uh, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's, it's your heart being surrendered in the posture of your soul, but at the same time, willing to do the work, willing to give up yourself yeah. to accept what God is calling you into. And, 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 and especially for a lifestyle of addiction, yeah. uh, obedience is a big part of your transformation. Yeah. So because, obedient to the word of God, becoming obedient, becoming obedient to the Holy Spirit, and really just like pressing into what he has for you. Yeah, and that's what I want to unpack a little bit, like, like, because that that seems to be one of the um, kickers with addiction and non-addiction is that is that moment of surrender. And that's not a point easily come to for addicts. Yeah, there's there's oftentimes a lot of story arc before that moment of, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm surrendering. What was it for you? Like, like talk about addiction, talk about what kept you there. Talk about 
like your mental state, the internal world that was keeping you, obviously you alluded to it earlier. You mentioned like at one point you're just like, I wanted to be dead. And when you, when you made that decision, then, then the hard drugs started coming, but you know, unpack the, the addictive mindset a little bit for people. Yeah. So um, that, that's a very good question. A lot of people, they don't fully understand like addiction. Like they, they just see someone who's addicted and they're like, well, why doesn't, why don't they just stop? But a lot of it is a spiritual thing. It's, it's demonic. And, yeah. and uh, another side of it too is, is um, people are in a place of brokenness. Like what I was touching on, the Holy spirit has shown me that some deep, deep seated issues were the reasons for my addiction, for my, my parents' separation yeah. and, and things with dad. Um, so I had to deal with those things to, to really be fully delivered from the addiction. Like Jesus delivered me, but, um, in, in my addiction, in my addiction, um, I just felt so hopeless, man. Cause because I, I was like at this place where I was so torn inside or like this side of me hated what I was doing and, 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 and hated the person I became, but wow. this side like wanted to do good and wanted to be the person I used to be because like, I, I, I didn't forget who I was before, but I all of a sudden I ended up at this place of just being so broken and lost, but not able to pull myself out of the hole. Yeah. 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 That duality and that, like that battle, there's like a, like a war being waged. And, and it sounds like that's where surrender comes about when you, you get to a point of like, I just, I can't go on anymore. Yeah. 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 And, and, and in your story, it's like teen challenge seemed to be pretty, pretty catalytic. Like it's like having that environment was, it sounds like pretty transformative. Talk about, talk about the, the time with teen challenge and some of the transformation that was happening there and the process. Yeah. Yeah, so Teen Challenge was amazing. It's, it's, it's one of the harder programs if you, if you hear about it, but their success rate is 86% of people who go through that program stay sober after for, for I think it's a year or so many years. And I think other non-faith-based uh, programs that are uh, for addiction, it's like less than 10%. So yeah, so Jesus, Jesus is the factor for Teen Challenge. Jesus is the transformation for Teen Challenge. But I had a good time, man, because it's it's like everyone there is pretty well like minded and, and they're they're new to their faith and they're just kind of like having that fire instilled in them. But at the same time, we're all going through struggles of of not growing up in the church yeah. and to live this different lifestyle for Jesus. And and so it, there's a lot of like ups and downs but just the, i would say the brotherhood there and and the leadership there was amazing which is kind of lacking in our culture man we don't like finding brotherhood and finding leaders we want to follow that that can be hard man there's a lot of people out there just kind of bouncing around from thing to thing and they don't feel like they have community and they don't feel like they have a purpose and so what a, what a gift that you were able to experience out there yeah absolutely yeah. So talk about coming out of Teen Challenge. You're in that program for how long? Is that I like was there. Yeah, I was court ordered for one year. And right. then I did a four month apprenticeship where you get to kind of be a leader there. Cool. And then they have a they have a year long ministry institute down in Los Angeles that I went to. Nice. Yeah. And I'm imagining the transition from that, you know, that could be that's a big transition because you got a lot of brotherhood, a lot of community, a lot of purpose. How the how the transition go? Probably a, a period of seeking and trying to find your way, but maybe talk about that, and, and then also get into what you're doing these days. Because I know you guys have started an outreach and doing some really cool stuff in our town. Yeah, so I got out of Teen Challenge and came home to Reading, and um, I I started working and I was involved with church and stuff like that. But when I was at the Ministry Institute, I I. I really felt called to this, the skid row ministry. We would go out every week on skid row and, and share the gospel out there and, 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 and feed on the streets out there. And so that's where the Lord really called me as a leader. Most of the time that I was at the school. So when I came back home, this place in me was like, there was like this void inside of me, even though I was going to church and I was waking up, reading my Bible and I was doing all those things. Yeah. This place of fulfillment wasn't being met in me. Mm -hmm. And 
God gave me a, a, a vision to, to go buy a karaoke machine and start preaching the gospel right here in Reading in, in the parks to, wow. the, to the homeless people in the parks. So, wow, come on. Yeah, started doing that. We, we, and, and we call it founded, and it comes from the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, the, it, it's Luke 15, I think 32 is the son of mine was once lost, but now he is found. Nice. And, and that's my heart, man, because I, I feel like I am that prodigal son that, that Jesus found me and he's going to use to find many others. Come on. Yeah. So you're like walking in your purpose. It's yeah. When we're not in our purpose, that's a big void. Yeah. What about talk about like back there and when you're doing skid row and now you're doing stuff in our town, you know, what kind of insight can you give people that maybe are not doing that when it comes to those that are on the streets? Is there a lot of addiction out there? Um, is making contact with people in that space simple? It's easy. Is it hard? You know, I think a lot of people are like, I don't even know what I would do. Yeah, I would, I would say, I mean, there, there, there's hurting people everywhere inside yeah. the church outside of the church addiction is a it, it's 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 grasp is like everywhere and i think we we miss it sometimes we we, we i think we want to hide it but i i love what you're doing lance is like we we bring these things out in the open and we testify to the glory of god what he's done in other people and i think it opens up other people to just be honest with themselves and their situations and see that they're not the only ones suffering from this and god like come into that as a church family and, and, and both change and deliver them from that. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I love it. And the acceptance that like it's unconditional love, like, Hey, we take you as you are. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Anything, anything you'd want people to know that maybe, you know, that they, they don't have the story of addiction. Again, I think sometimes there's like lines and culture and we judge and, addict over there non-addict over here and i don't know just to me my heart is like let's we've all got something to contribute to the grand scheme yeah um, anything you'd like like someone to know that doesn't have a background in addiction that that might help pull people together and might be like a an, either an invitation or just information that can erase some of those lines that keep us judging each other or separate from each other you know what i mean yeah i would I would say um, try and just see, see people as as Jesus would see them, and and I know that's like a, a Christian ease almost type of thing, but but I believe when when we we can see past people's situations and and really see um, into their hearts, because I've seen people that are absolutely like so far gone that you would you're almost like me even being like a a, a firm believer having faith in this stuff where I'm like, maybe Lord, we should go to the next guy. But I, Jesus changed those people's lives. I've seen Jesus transform their lives where they're working a job. You can't even tell they were on the streets, you know? So God, God restores minds. He restores lives. He restores all people. And I, when, when we can see that and have faith in that, that's when we start walking in that. That's when we start reaching out to, to those that are broken and, and just loving on them, really. It's good. Yeah, and it's recognizing the value in humanity. Like all people are valued. They're all God's kids. They're all amazing in his sight. And no matter what station of life they're in, right? It's like people are people. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a lot to talk about here. This has been, this has been really good, really refreshing. Um, uh, anything with the founded, with founded that it would be good for people to know? I don't know if you're like, looking to share what you're up to so people can join sometimes it's like oh no we're just doing it and god will bring us the right people um so yeah no, pr no pressure to like no 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 yeah um so found partnered with a church here in reading called the lighthouse church with matthew okay. and um so i'm the outreach coordinator for the lighthouse now and and god just brought us together uh uh matt matt's matthew's just a great great man of god and um but we are, uh, so we go to the Cypress Bridge every week, every Sunday at four o'clock. And we have a team of probably 10 people that cook dinner every week out there, preach the gospel every week out there, pray for people, love on people. And we've, and we've been doing it for over a year now. And wow. then as well as that, we have a um, for Teen Challenge in Eureka. I used to, I worked over there for a while. Okay. And uh, 
we planted a founded over there and and that founded meets every every week or every other week as well and and the the, the cool thing that gets me excited about that um founded is they they take the guys that are actually in the program out to preach the gospel to the lost so that they're literally six months before on, like on the streets now they're going out into the streets and they're, and they're sharing their faith with people that's rad i love it, it. and then as well as um founded as a clothing brand that's nonprofit that is building to fund the mission Sweet. and um yeah and, and we've also been doing this thing called revival under the sundial where we go out there and do worship and prayer and some christian rap and things like that and really just bring uh, the lord to the community that's cool man any any uh do you have any of your wares available any of the founded yeah this is a hat right here and then Sweet. i have um, I have sweatshirts and and t-shirts and 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 really the the vision God has given me that I'm, that we're kind of like trying to fundraise for currently is a kiosk in the mall, not only to sell the clothing uh, to to fund the mission that we're that God has us on, but to be a a an access point in the mall to have people maybe Bethel students or or just like Holy Spirit filled people to be able to speak into people's lives right in the middle of the mall right here and ready. That's cool. I want to go back to like, how is it? How are you guys received when you're going out and you're in the streets and it sounds like you're maybe down in some of the homeless encampments? Maybe some people are like, oh, I don't know if I could ever do that. That seems so intense. Like, yeah. how, how are you guys received? What, what are those experiences and moments like? They're, they're amazing. Um, yeah. Any type of outreach ministry. Um, it, it's, I mean, we see amazing things like on, on, on like the day to day, but it's when you start investing yourself and going out there every week, you yeah. begin to see miracles start taking place. And a lot of them are formed through uh, relationships, <laughs> through knowing each person out there by name. Like when we come out there, we know most of the people by first name basis mm -hmm. and we know their problems and we've prayed for them before. And, and not only do we go and preach the gospel and feed, but we're trying to connect these people to resources to not only uh, to, to see transformed lives. So yeah. we have three people from uh, the streets, one from the homeless camp and teen challenge over in Eureka. Um, so that that's one of our, that's my heart is, is cause I, I know what teen challenge did for me is yeah. when I, someone's like kind of like ripe for the harvest, I'll buy, we'll found it. We'll buy them a bus ticket to go over there. If they'll go. That's rad. I love it. Yeah. I mean, it, it, like you can kind of make people a project or you can like get to know people you can like actually be in relationship with people and when people trust you it's amazing the kind of stuff that happens right <laughs> like people want to be loved and they want to be respected and they want to be treated with value and i love that yeah it's inspiring what you're doing man thank you thank you for what you're doing in our community and thanks for thanks for being open with your story bro like really just pray this reaches a lot of people and I think, I think addiction is something that a lot of people are navigating, suffering from, and like keys to freedom is, I don't know. I just want to see everybody free, you know? <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's all about just having a, a relationship with God. Like I said, I worked at Teen Challenge for a while too. Yeah. And, and, and that's the biggest thing is people, they, they get delivered, but then they fall away. They come to the program and they even they're there for a year and then and then they leave and they and they they leave their Bible closed and they and they don't uh, take that relationship with God with them and then we see them come on a restoration to 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 go through the program again so yeah important yeah yeah cultivating real friendship with the Lord and boy there's a like like there's a big thought because some some people even again back to surrender some people are ready for that and some people aren't ready for that huh like it's yeah. there's a process to come to that place of surrender and like I'm, i see jesus as the answer right yeah well man i appreciate thoughts or sharing I, I don't know anything parting anything lastly maybe something i haven't asked you about that you wanted to get out yeah i'll i'll, I'll just say um you don't have to be a drug addict or had been a drug addict to reach people in addiction. Uh, I think I from the enemy is like, Oh, I can't relate with them and stuff, but we, we relate on, on a basis of love That's and good. we just, 
God's love. And, and I'll tell you, I bring people out to found it. I'm, and found it's open for anyone that wants to ever come out to found it. It's open for anyone. So it's a very place for someone to come share the gospel that never has and also come around guys that do it every week so you can come and learn how to do it but I see people I see God impact people that have never uh, done drugs in their life out there and in in ways that that they wouldn't really believe till they seen it and and I and yeah I think, I think that's that's what I wanted to share that's sweet man I love that there's a place for everybody at the table come on yeah sweet well, Chris, it's really good talking to you, man. Super inspiring. Appreciate your faith and just being open with your story. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks for joining with us. Again, we're just trying to like do a deep dive on addiction and be talking to folks like Chris, be spending some time with maybe some people that work in that space as maybe like teen challenge type folks or therapists or whatever. And yeah, the hope with all this is just not only inspiration, but like education and like informing people. And, and again, like maybe there's some of you out there that you're engaging with our platform and you're like, well, I want to, I want to find places to engage, like stuff to do. Chris has got some really cool stuff going on here in Reading. So look him up. He's down at the lighthouse with uh, Matt Medeiros and that crew. And again, your crew is called founded. So look for that clothing wherever, wherever we can find it, maybe in a kiosk at the Mount Shasta mall soon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if there's any like channels on social media you want to let us know about. People can look you up or. Uh, we got a uh, founded church on Facebook. Cool. Sweet. So yeah, you can find those guys there and Chris, thank you. And you guys that are with us uh, watching this. Thank you. Really good to see you all. And again, get involved. The world is run by those who show up. Yeah. See you next time. Peace. See you, Chris. See you later.